of you. I want to tell you how I heard of what you did. I see that woman. I see this thing. You just got to listen to everything in my heart and let it out. And he, an hour of your tirading and ranting and how badly you hurt and how you went through the whole thing. Come from as much hurt as you can, not from the anger, okay? okay. And at the end, say, I want to let go of all this hurt. I want to forgive you. You're forgiven. Okay. Okay? And then when it comes up, remind yourself that you've forgiven him. Okay. And if he does it again, break his neck. <laughs> That's for sure. I mean, is, is, he, is, he, is he feeling better about it, uh, that he's not going to do it? Um, we're both really trying really hard. You may need to sit, sit in for some short-term uh, counseling with a, in a brief a couple therapy might work for you, too. Because yeah. you've had a, a terrific renting apart. And whenever that happens, it's good to have someone to help pull it back together. Again. Okay. Okay, Nicole. Thanks a lot. Take care. Who's next? Okay, we have Susan on line six, and she has a question about her dreams. Susan. Hello? Hi, Susan. Hi. How old are you? Seventeen. Can you speak up, please? Um, okay. Okay. Right. Your dreams? Well, no. Well, okay, I broke up with my boyfriend like, last May. And um, I don't know if, I mean, I'm always having dreams of, of him, you know, and I wonder, I mean, I'm always missing him and everything. I wonder, what should I do? I mean, I don't know, should I call him or should I send him a letter or? Why did you break up with him? Well, first of all, um, I just like I want to turn on the TV so my mom won't hear. Okay, we got to turn that down. We don't want mom to hear any of this. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, I, I think that this one, first of all, I told him uh, that it is, it is an excuse that um, I need more time for my studying and everything like but that. Why did you break up with him? The real reason. Well, we really didn't want to. I just uh, told him that just to see how... Yeah, but why Why did you break up with him? Why? Yeah, why? The real reason. Really, I just, I felt like I was just too tied up. You didn't want to be with one person. Well, no, it's just that he used to call all the time. Okay, so the reason that, the reason that you didn't want to be with him is you felt he was controlling you. No, all around. He thought I was controlling him. He, he said that um, well, well, af after we broke up, I, I heard that he, he told um What he I feels doesn't matter. The reason you broke up with him, he's kept on calling you all the time, smothering you, wrapping you up, and you felt you, you weren't free. Yeah, that and that's the way he felt, too. Well, put his feelings aside. It was wrong for you, right? Well, I, I don't think so. I mean, then why did you break up? I just wanted to see how his reaction would be, but I didn't really meant it. Well, that's called playing games. Now, if you, in other words, you didn't think he, he really cared? Yeah, I, I oh, you know, so whenever, what you, whenever so he would tell me that, that, oh, you know, that he loved me or anything, I would just tell him to be quiet because I didn't want to hear any lies or anything like that. Well, wait a second. Is that true, that you didn't want to hear any lies? Yeah, I thought he was, he was So you didn't believe in him? No. And, I, and what you were doing is you were testing him? Yeah. Okay, and then what was his reaction to breaking up with him? Uh, he didn't want to. He was like, why? You know, he... He just didn't want to until like a week later, and then I, I told him, well, if you really love me, you'll accept it. And then he said, okay. You know, Susan, Susan. You know? Susan. What? I, I know, I'm very, I'm, I'm confident. I'm not confident, you know? Susan, it's more than that. You play games. Does he feel that too, probably? Of course. And he resented you for it, because you hurt him. Probably he really didn't love me. Probably he didn't. But that doesn't justify you playing games. If you, if, if you felt he didn't love you, the thing you say to him is, you know something, um, this relationship isn't working for me, and I, I don't want to be in it anymore. That's it. Thank you. The thing, the thing is, I, I did love him. Then why did you play games? I don't know. Susan, you're 17 years old. And relationships at this time in life largely are to discover what life is about. But at 17, you're already supposed to be a little more serious. 
you're behaving like a 15-year-old. Yeah, and he's been showing things like, like uh, I, I just asked him if he can come over my my birthday party. He just came over in a five minutes. I mean, and he usually doesn't. You know, he usually doesn't go just anywhere or to anybody. Susan, may I be really honest? Yeah. May I be really honest? Am I honest? I I'm asking you if you're going to permit me to be really honest. Yeah. You're very immature. Yeah, honest to goodness. Under immature in the dictionary is your picture. So it was my fault. It isn't a matter of it being your fault. You were scared. You were unsure. You were frightened. You were in over your head. This was a love relationship. You didn't know what you wanted. So you decided to make it his problem. So you played games with him. You wanted to be in the relationship and you wanted to be out of the relationship. You wanted him to love you. You wanted him to prove that he loved you more. You didn't love him, you thought. You weren't sure whether you really loved him. It goes a million ways. Every question that you have about him, you see, was a question about yourself. So you were using the relationship to answer questions about yourself. But, exactly. that, but that's what it's like when you're, when you're 15 or 16. But Susan, you're getting older now, and you're hurting other people's feelings. But should I just let it go? Well, you should call, you should send him a note telling him that you've grown up a little bit and you realize that you were just playing with him and uh, using him and you hurt his feelings and you want to apologize for being so childish. But it's been 10 months already. Susan, what did I just say? I mean, he might be you're, ca you're the one who's calling me and what do you care what he thinks? You're apologizing to him for hurting him. That letter is appropriate for the next 25 years. Why don't you write it to him tomorrow? You're sorry for using him, taking advantage of him, and for being so unfeeling and for hurting his feelings and not caring about the way he reacted. You'll feel a lot better doing it. And what's more, the process of growing up will have truly started. you got to grow up sometimes. But you want me to tell you what growing up is about? Growing up is about telling the truth even when it doesn't flatter you. You accept your faults. You realize that you're a good person. And you say, I have strengths and I have weaknesses. And the truth is that your strength and your weakness are both part of the same trait. If you're a person who is proud of being honest all the time, your weakness is your dishonesty. And your strength is not being honest all the time, but being aware of the times when you're not honest. We'll be right back. <laughs> Pictures. What do you got? Classic mob hits. Two in the head, one in back. Detective Emily Eaton is entering a world she knows nothing about. We don't kill each other. I know human nature. You do not know our nature. Now, she must use everything she knows about her world. What are you trying to prove? To find a killer in theirs. If they can get to one of you. It's going down. I want back up. Then they can get to all of you. Melanie Griffith. A Stranger Among Us, rated PG-13, starts Friday, July 17th. Food editor Alan Halfrecht. You want to take every little step to cut down on saturated fat, but all your family wants is their favorite foods, right? Here's one easy step. A new Crisco oil that's 90% unsaturated fat. Not even olive oil and corn oil are lower in saturated fat. New Crisco oil. Here's another easy step. Use skinless chicken for this family favorite. It's got less fat. With Crisco, there's never a heavy, oily taste. Cooks who know trust Crisco. If you could live inside an alcoholic, you'd understand the depth of his dependence. Hey, bartender, one more drink. Drink, drink. The isolation. I don't need your help. The lack of control. I can quit any time. And you would know that inside... Don't worry, I'll cut down. down he's down. desperately crying for help. If you or a loved one has a problem with drugs or alcohol, call Charter now at 1-800-9-CHARTER. If you don't get help at Charter, please get help somewhere. There's a new kind of comfort for women on the move. Something so soft and flexible it follows every move. New Always Sheer Confidence Panty Liners with Soft Sore. Unlike regular liners, they're flexible, not stiff. With adhesive edge to edge to help stay put no matter how you move. A panty liner so comfortable it's hard to believe it's there. 
new always sheer confidence panty liners with soft sword. A new kind of comfort for women on the move. David Visca, we have a call that's very disturbing coming up. What is this? Okay, her name is Rena, and she's on line B. She's 11 years old and uh, needs some help. Rena? Rena? Yes. You're 11? Yes. Where are you now? I'm living with a family. With a family? Yes. How long have you been with them? Um, about six months. Okay, tell me what's going on. Well, I got molested, and... Um, I've never told anybody but my mom a couple years ago. And it really got, it was really shocking to her. It was like, really shocked. And, um, a couple years ago, um, we, me and my father had got thrown out of the house. And we didn't have nowhere to stay. You and your father? Yes. Why was your father thrown out? Because, um, he didn't have a job and he jumped through the rent. And were they, was your mother living with him? No, my mother lived by herself. Okay, so why weren't you with your mother? Um, my mom wanted me to stay with my dad because she couldn't keep me out where she was living. Okay, who molested you? My mom's sister's husband's brother. Okay. Um, and you moved in with your dad? Yes. Right after the molestation? Um, no, not really. How long afterwards? It was like two years after. Okay. And and after, and your father lost his job and you put out in the street? Yes, and um, then my uncle offered us to live with him. And then after my father um, had seen one of his friends and his friends had invited him to live with him, but I was still staying with my uncle. Then. Um, I came to live here with them, and I'm still living here. My father's looking for work. You're, you're living right now with your uncle? No, I'm living with another family. Well, who's that family? Um, my dad's friend. Oh, your dad's friend. Yes. Okay, so do you go to school? Yes. A and you're with this, with this family. What is it like living with this family? It's kind of weird because I feel like I want my own house, and I... I want all kinds of things that they have that I can't have. Like what? Like nice clothes and stuff. Uh-huh. Who takes care of you? Um, well, we all live in one house and we stay together in bunches. Like, I mostly hang around with, um, my dad's friend's daughter. Okay. But who, for instance, uh, buys your clothes, buys your food? My father. Is he working? No, he's on unemployment, so. Um, are you taken care of? Yes. But you want more? Yeah. Okay, what do you need? Like, I, I just want more than I have. It's hard to live with other people. What does it feel like? So very weird. I just want my own house sometimes. Do you see your mother at all? Well? Do you ever see your mother? Um, yeah, I see her like every other weekend, but I can't see her now because my grandfather's in the hospital and she has to take care of him and um, my grandmother because nobody wants to pay for my grandfather's funeral when he dies. Um, does your mother send you any money? Um, no, but she does give my dad money sometimes. Do you ever ask her for things? Is she working? Yes. Do you ever ask her for things that you need? Well, um, she works in a clothes department, so she gives me clothes when she knows that I need them. Okay. And does she know that you need them now? Um, yeah. She's been giving me little by little. What sort of things do you get when you get them? Um, like pants, socks, underclothes. Okay. So it's basic stuff, huh? Yes. What do you need right now? A home. I know. I know. More than anything, huh? Yeah. So what are your dad's chances? Well, he's getting his own business, trying to get his own business and landscaping. He's working. Um, 
with one of the family's friends. But, um, it ain't going very well now. It's not, huh? No. In landscaping? Yes. Yeah. So, does he work for someone else? No. What does he tell you about, about jobs? Um, can you repeat that again? What does he tell you about his job opportunities? What sort of things do um, you... Well, he tells me, like, oh, I'm going to do this job, and I'm going to take this much, and I get happy and stuff, because I keep saving money little by little on the bank so we could get our own house. And um, I get really excited, but it seems like it's never going to happen. How long has it been since you've been without a house? Um, about six months. Mm -hmm. And how often do you see your dad? I live with him. Oh, so you're all together in this house? Yes. Oh, so that's not as bad as you painted it. No. But you, at least you're living with your dad. Yeah. So you have family. Well, yeah, sort of. Sort of? Yeah. Oh, would you be talking about the breakup of your parents in some way? Um. When you say you wish you had a home, a home with the mother and dad in it? Yeah. So if, if you were in this situation and your mother was living with your father in this house, you wouldn't feel this way, would you? No, not really. But right. then I would sort of because they get in arguments and stuff, and then I'm in between and it. I understand. It me. But, I th but if your mother and father were just having rough times and couldn't afford a place of their own and were living with this other family and were getting along, mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't be calling me tonight, would you? No. No. Because people don't cry about being poor. They cry about being lonely. Isn't that what this is about? Yeah. Yeah. Did your dad know this? No, and it's hard for me to tell him. Well, wait, wait, no, 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 wait a second. What you ta need to talk to your dad about is your feelings. You see, he is feeling ashamed because of his, his not getting a job. But that's not what's bothering you. All on the surface, it may be a little, but down deep, you're upset because you don't have a home. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Yeah. And all that, that a home is, is a place where you feel loved. Mm -hmm. And the reason that you feel loved in a home is so you can talk about the things that bother you. Yeah. A home where you cannot talk about the things that bother you, even if it's a big mansion and you have servants and you have all these things and endless closets of clothes doesn't feel full. But a house, no matter how humble it is, where people respect each other and love each other and let people talk about their feelings is a place where you can feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And what you have to do, because you're the one who needs to do this, because you're the one who calls, you can make your whole life a lot better right now. What you need to do is you need to say to your dad, I need to tell you how I feel. I miss not having a home a place where I have a mother and father taking care of me. It's not the money, and it's not so much the things I miss, but I miss having someone who's there to talk to me. And I need to talk to you. Does he spend much time with you? Um, sort of, but he's been mostly spending time looking for jobs and having his girlfriend take him places because she don't have a car right now. Okay. Where does she live? Um, in Los Angeles. No, does she live in the same place? Um, no. How do you get along with her? I get along with with her. I would always try to get along with her. Yeah. That's do you know what that's being politically correct. I mean you wanna make it easy for for everybody to live together. Yeah. Uh does she work? Yeah. Are they thinking of getting together? Um they're thinking of moving into a house together. They're both saving money. And all they have saved up in the bank is $300 right now. What do they need? Um, well, my dad says when he gets his um, money from those um, taxes, um, he's going to put it in the bank and try to save money to get a good house and all the supplies they need. Okay, but the main thing is what he can give you now that you're not getting, and that's the understanding, someone to talk to, and someone to be uh, there for you when you need to talk about the, the hurt that you're having. 
you've got to tell him about your feelings and tell him that you need you need to just talk about him. You don't want him to shell out any more money. You just want him to give you a little more time so that you can know that you have a place to go with your feelings. Mm -hmm. Most of my family um, has offered me their homes, but I just want to still put to one of my parents. I understand, and that's probably correct. So that you are doing the right thing, but you've got to get your dad to talk to you about what it is you're feeling. If you can do that, Rina, you're going to feel a lot better. Because what you're missing mostly is the intimacy of a family, more than the roof over your head. Okay? Okay. okay. Does that help? Um, yeah. Give me a call back. Okay, um, were you up in Upland at a meeting of a church? Sure. Yeah, because somebody asked me to ask you. Okay. It's interesting you know about that. Is school going good? Yeah. Put your energy in school. That's your job, you know. Okay. 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 Take care and call me back. Okay. This city is full of a lot of little tragedies and sadnesses that none of us are aware of. They don't make the papers, but they do tear at our hearts. And we're just not taking care of our own in these, in these times. A lot of people are slipping through the cracks. Maybe it's time we heard what people really need. We'll be right back. Count the number of different spectacles Fritz wears next and enter our spectacular sweepstakes. Look, the Prince of Weather and his knight have come to save us. The tall gray one is mine. Hurry, warrior! Put on the eyes of Grok! Call 1-900-TV4-KNBC now. $1.25 per call, 18 and over. Answer correctly and you may win a cruise to Mexico, passes to Universal, or $5,000. Our solid antiperspirant is strong enough to tackle even the biggest challenge. But it's not for them. It's for her. Secret. With the most effective ingredient you can get to help keep you dry, cool. In control. And Secret still pH balance to work with a woman's special chemistry. Secret. Strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. A puzzle. With so many stomach remedies around, how do you know which you can take for heartburn? And for diarrhea? And for upset stomach? You take Pepto-Bismol to relieve most any common stomach problem, heartburn, upset stomach, and diarrhea. So who needs anything else? That is a puzzle. Pepto-Bismol is the only one you need. David, we have Paul on line eight, and we've talked to him before. He's an ex-police officer, and now he's back on the force. Paul. Hello. I remember that voice. Yes. I, uh... You were so angry. Wait a second. This was, what, eight months ago? Yes, sir. Eight months ago. Let me just think. Paul, Paul, Paul. Um, you were afraid of ripping people out of cars and pummeling them in... in, in, in in a law outside of a 7-Eleven. That's correct. Okay, I remember you. Go ahead. Well, uh, I think your advice was for me to, you know, move 
move away, um, get away from the streets, and I, I couldn't. I mean, I missed the streets. I know that sounds odd. No, it doesn't. But I missed being a cop. And uh, I thought also that it would help me control... Facing the beast? Excuse me? Facing the beast. Yeah. It would help me control my temper. It would help me control um, the violent outburst, if you will. You went back? Yes, sir. What's happened? I've become um, more violent than before. And even though the streets, it does things to you. I mean, you, you feel that you can make a difference out there. But you see so much death and a heartache. And I don't know. You think you can make a difference, but you actually don't. And, but yet it's like a drug for me. How? What is it that you're pulled to? I don't know. Sometimes I think it's because I can be violent <clears throat> and I can get away with it. Sometimes I think it's because I do care and I try to help people. You can be violent and get away with it. Yes. Expound on that, please. Well, I responded to a 415 family not too long ago. What is that? The family disturbance. Okay. And this individual got in my face and I heard him. And I thought I might be terminated for it. I wasn't. You were open about reporting it? Excuse me? You were open about reporting it? Can yes, you? I mean, it was clear. Okay. Because I had to make a report because this individual was injured. And you denied nothing? I told him that I injured him. I told him that um, it was in self-defense. Was it? No. Okay. Go ahead. Um, and after that, it was almost as if I mean, I felt really good about it. I mean, this guy was a scumbag. He had just beaten a woman. And I felt like I had done something right. You know, it's like finding the child molester and just putting a bullet in him, putting him away, just to make him take care of him. So, you know, I believe sometimes I can help because but, the system does nothing. But you're putting yourself in the position of the jury. Yes, I am. And of executioner, of prisoner, and jailer. Yes. And finally, I went to one of many homicides, and I found a young 12-year-old boy lying in the alley. He had been repeatedly stabbed. And we found the who did it, they were all ages, well, I'd say 12 to 16 years of age, and they had smiles on their face, as if they had just killed a turkey for Thanksgiving. And I remember looking down at this boy, and I had already found out from his <clears throat> screaming grandmother that he was from New Mexico. He'd never been in a gang in his life, but he looked like it to them. And they had smiles on their faces. One had a smirk. They didn't care about going to jail because they knew they'd be out in the few. And the hatred was so powerful that I, I almost lost it. Watching this young man die, I've seen a lot of death. But this one really hit me hard. And I realized then that Maybe that's why I'm calling tonight, that, that I am really close. And I, I just don't know what to do. I mean, I... What stopped you? Oh, a couple of my partners. Oh, you were ready to do it? Oh, yeah. Did so you remove your weapon? I unsnapped it. And the response on their face when you did that? Their smile went away. And the sense that went over you as that happened? Wasn't enough. You wanted? I wanted, I wanted to put them away. I mean, 
and I, I just wanted to dump them. I knew that they were... You, was your hand on the weapon? Yes. Were you drawing it? No. Were you about to? Yes, his face wouldn't have cleared from that smile. I would have dumped him because I kept looking at him and he had <clears throat> just the victim and just took his last breath and I was standing in his blood and it didn't matter anymore. I mean, I love my family. I, I don't want to be on their side, but it, it almost didn't, nothing mattered. Just his face. Okay. At what point did you decide to call me again? It was after that incident. Okay. At what moment did the thought cross your mind? I've got to call Dr. Vista. A couple of days later, I knew that I, I was beyond, almost out of control. When did that thought occur to you? In what circumstance? <clears throat> Getting back in my unit after briefing and going out into the street knowing that I felt like I was a, I don't know, out for my prey, wanting, wanting something to go wrong, Did wanting you? some scumbag maybe to rape some woman or to catch some dirtball in the act of a crime and then just dump him, get it over with, to kind of help out the justice system. And I knew <clears throat> that that's not reality. But it's become your reality. Yes. And therefore, it's become our reality. Yes. Okay. Isn't that the sad part? Because the truth is, it's making you into a killer. Mm. And when you become the thing you hate, how do you stop yourself? I don't know. That's the scary part. How do you tell the difference? That you have a better reason? That's it. I mean, I, I know what my objectives are. I mean, I know what I want to do. Well, you want to r rid the world of scum. Yes. But this is the hard part. There's a scum part of yourself that's getting stirred up. That's what's killing you. How do you mean? Well, the, the desire to do that and to give in to it is also giving in to the same force that they gave in to, to commit the crime, albeit for another reason. But is my reason more valid? Are, I mean, you to, are you to make be the judge of that, too? I think we all are. I think it's become a... In law enforcement, it has become an eight-hour-a-day job, or ten, or whatever the OT is. It has become numb. Officers look down at a child laying there, with pieces of him gone because the old man was drunk, or a boy stabbed or shot to death. Oh well. And it's getting to the point where it's, the justice system doesn't care anymore. What if the boy who was smirking and laughing at you was someone who had never killed anyone and pretended during this melee to be one of the perpetrators? Just so he wouldn't be stabbed by the other, the other members of the gang. Oh, I could tell he was a perp just because he had, uh, he had blood all over him. Maybe he purposely put it. Uh, maybe he was clever enough to hide it by getting himself covered with it to show that he was one of them. Well, I believe though that birds of a feather flock together. But I've spoken to young boys who are in gangs who have done nothing who have faked the crimes that they've been accused of just, just to keep from being beaten up, who don't know how to get out of it. I mean, I, those kids exist as well. You can't deny it. I mean, I've spoken oh, to I, I, you. Oh, you're, that's true, but they could also get them killed in that, many, many different ways. That's right, but is it for you to be the one who extinguishes that hope in, in another person because you read them wrong? You see, you're, you're doing something that is so wrong that it's causing you to doubt your own goodness. That's not what I took the job for, you're right. That's right. And you should quit. I, I, it's time. You're ready.
ready to go. And the truth is that you'll do 20 years. Because you're going to do it in a an, in an time where people are very hostile to police action, where the Rodney King trial is going to show a lot of people on the force having taken on a new responsibility to stand up. And there will be people like the person who restrained you the other night mm -hmm. saying, I knew he was ready to go. And they'll say, why didn't you do something about it? It's time to take yourself out of the streets. The truth is, you can't manage it anymore. It's funny how people look at a situation like the Rodney King day. They look at him as the only victim. Oh, we're, every, all, we're all victims. Every officer there has had so many people like him get in this space, evading arrest, and a little bit of provoking. It, it's not right, but it can't set you off. Right, but why should you be the next one? I don't want to be. Then you have to quit. Take yourself out. You need a leave of absence. You need to do it now. How do you do it? You stop. You say you need a leave of absence. It's all getting to you. You're afraid you're going to go off. Now, you, can't, you can't tell your superiors that. They think you're going 5150 and you're gone. But the truth is, maybe you have. <clears throat> That's what you're calling about. 5150 is uh, not fit, right? Crazy. Yeah. But, may, but when you're ready to kill, at the drop of a leaf, as a soldier uh, on the front lines waiting for the enemy will see a leaf fall and turn around and fire ten shots with his automatic weapon into it. I don't know. I, like I said, I've been kicking it around in my head. I, 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 I want to get into something else. I had the opportunity. Maybe you should be the one who starts the organization for police officers who have no other place to turn to who cannot go to their supervisors, who need counsel, who need someone to talk to. It's almost like being police officers anonymous, if you know what I mean. Oh, and there's a few. Uh, there's a few I that know. feel just like I do. I know. Because uh, the system is getting so worse uh, than it was years ago, um, as far as keeping the bad guy where he's supposed to be, that but there's the a lot of cops trying to do it themselves. Doesn't that mean that the bad guy role has just switched? Not necessarily. I mean, I don't feel that way. I feel that... I know, but the law has something to say about that. But the law has to do its job. If it doesn't, if it keeps letting children be hurt, women raped, and look at it as well, you know... But what you're doing is making the law seem tougher, not more just. And that is not a way to change it or to get sympathy. Don't you think that would send a message to the bad guy? That a few of them get dumped and maybe, maybe they get the message. This isn't the Charles Bronson movie. This is your life, pal. And you know what? You're calling because you need permission to quit tonight. Paul, I told you eight months ago. Your time has come round at last. Next time you'll be on the other side of the docket and your friends will be testifying against you. Don't make it happen. We'll be right through.